Okay, so uh, let's solve an example to get a better uh, understanding of the basically PMP transistors and how to deal with them at least for the DC analysis. We're going to talk about the small signal analysis in a moment. So we have the circuit and we need to actually find the terminal currents of this Q1. So it means IC, IP, and IE. And verify the operation in the forward active region, right? And IS is given to us, beta is given to us, and the transist the, the question is really telling us to ignore early effect. So no early effect. Okay, so we can use the nice and simple uh, equations that we like. Um, so how do I approach this? Um, I don't know if I'm in the active region, but I, well, I have to start from somewhere. So I'm going to say that I'm going to assume I'm in the active region. I'm going to solve the question, find all the currents and voltages at the terminals, and then I'm going to I'm going to determine if my assumption was correct or not. If it was correct, great, I'm done. If it's not, then I have to actually scratch everything, erase everything, and start over. Okay. So I'm going to assume uh, Q1 is in active region. With this assumption, I'm allowed to use the nice exponential equation that IC is equal to IS um, exponential of V. This time, because it is PNP, it is VEP over VT. Okay. IS is given. It's basically 2 times 10 to the negative 16. And VEP is given. Why? Because VE is 2 volts and VP is 1.2 volts. So this is going to be 0.8 volts divided by 26 millivolts. If you do the math, you're going to get 4.61 milliamps. Okay, now because still I'm in the active region, I can use the nice relationship between the currents. Because remember, when we're in the active region, all the currents are related to each other using beta. So I know that IP is going to be just IC divided by beta. So it's going to be 4.61 milliamps divided by 50. That will be 92.2 microamps. And then I know IE, I can say beta plus 1 times the base current, or beta plus 1 over beta times collector current, or I can just say that it's IB plus IC. Right? There are many ways to actually find it. Either way, you're going to get to somewhere around 4.7 milliamps. Okay, now I have all the currents, but I need to find all the vol terminal voltages because that's how I can actually tell if I'm in the active region or not, right? So I have the terminal voltage for emitter and base. How about the collector? Uh, this is one of those times that I want you guys to actually pause, try to actually calculate the collector voltage, and then we'll continue, okay? Try as much as you can uh, and make sure that you actually get there uh, get the answer yourself before resuming the video. Okay, so I hope that you all have tried it. Uh, the easiest way to find the collector voltage, so this is the collector of my transistor, so this is VC, from here to ground basically. And I can see that, well, since here is ground, it's basically, and I know that since I have a PNP transistor, uh, the direction of the current is this way, this way, and this way, right? So basically my VC is gonna be just RC IC. So you're gonna get 200 times uh, 4.61 milliamps. So that's uh, 0 0.922 volts or 922 millivolts, okay? So if in your solution, when you pause the video, if you actually used KVL on, for example, this loop or KVL on this loop, you might actually have got to the result. But now that I wrote the solution, you might also appreciate that you went a really, really long way to actually get there. And this is the, the kind of mistake. And then you only got here because you know you knew what is VB and you knew what is VE. If these two weren't given to you, you would have been stuck. Because in your KVL, you actually use the base collector junction or emitter collector junction. It's not a junction, actually. The VEC or VBC, 
right? If you have those terms in your solution, know that you might have got away this time just because you had the base voltage and the emitter voltage, but you're going to face a lot of trouble solving other circuits just because, well, circuits are not going to be as simple as this one uh, in the future because, well, two of the terminals are given to you. So well, making that mistakes is, is not going to cost you more than just writing a few more equations. But look what I did here. I knew that using base collector or collector emitter uh, kind of voltages, they're not going to give me any new piece of information. The only thing that I, I can actually use in terms of my transistor is using the exponential equation, which relates the emitter base. So this junction, V emitter base, this is the voltage that I'm talking about, relates the emitter base voltage to the collector current and the beta stuff that like collector and emitter currents are actually like beta times or well, more or less beta times bigger than base current, right? So how do I find the collector voltage if I'm not going to use the transistor? Well, you see, I, I only use a simple Ohm's law kind of a thing, right? I noticed that my collector is actually, my collector voltage is actually equal to the voltage across this resistor. For most cases, you should use that. So for well, almost all the time, you should always look at how you can actually relate your collector voltage or the emitter voltage or whatever other voltage that you have to some other known voltage in your circuit. Okay. So in this case, when you're actually, if you have the V, for example, VEC, in your equations, or if you have, let's say, V, sorry, that, that was VBC. This was VBC. If you had VEC like this one in your KVL, like you wrote the KVL on the right loop, the VEC doesn't like that. That's not a known voltage. You don't know its voltage. You don't know its value until you know the collector voltage, which is the, what you're actually looking for, right? So by adding that term into your KVL and into your calculation, you're really getting further from the solution than getting closer, right? Because you're introducing an, another unknown to your equation that, that you only know its value when you know the collector voltage value, right? So I, I really, really want you guys, and I know that half of you are going to still make this mistake and always like when, when you panic in the exam or like in any kind of quiz, when, when you want to find the terminal voltages, you start writing KVLs, right? Useless KVLs. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that if you wrote the KVL on the left loop, so plus 1.2 minus VPC minus 200 IC is equal to zero, or you wrote plus two minus VEC minus 200 IC is equal to zero. If you wrote any of these two equations, you're going to be in big trouble if you actually do the same thing in any other question. Okay. You only could get away because you knew what is the, the base voltage and emitter voltage was given to you. If you didn't know that now, like basically this would have been a new unknown that you have added to the to the solution without actually helping you with anything. OK, I hope this was clear. So now once we actually got the collector voltage, I know that the V collector is smaller than V base. Therefore, the for a PNP transistor, I know that I have a collector base junction. So the collector base diode is in reverse bias, therefore um, in active or well, let's name it. So Q1 is in active region. Okay. So by the way, you might actually get confused that well, when you, in the other example, when you wanted to check if you're in the active or saturation, you check the emitter collector or collector emitter voltage. Why did you check the base collector or collector base voltage? So uh, the answer is that remember we talked about shallow saturation and deep saturation. So uh, when we are in deep saturation or not to be in 
deep saturation means that uh, for for NPN, let's say for NPN because we we have talked about most of our discussions has been on NPN. We know that the collector emitter should be greater than 0.2. Okay, for PNP, the em emitter collector should be greater than 0.2, but not to be in shallow saturation. So just like not even sa shallow saturation, meaning that when we are talking about deep saturation, it means that the base collector diode is actually fully forward biased, right? That's like we're past the, the threshold of going to shallow saturation and a little bit in saturation and stuff like that. But the first thing that could happen that takes us to shallow saturation is that the base collector junction be becoming going to the equilibrium, right? So to make sure that we, we are not in the, even in the sa shallow saturation, we need to make sure that the V base collector is smaller than zero. Okay, both of these are for the NPN. For PNP, this should be VEC being greater than 0.2, and this should be VCB smaller than zero. Okay?